United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If you just go to the microphone and right there and give us your name and your troop number and what badge you're working on, please. Um, I'm Cole. Um, I'm working on citizenship in the commu um, not, sorry, communications. Thank you. Cole? I'm Luke. I'm from Troop 39. I'm working on the communications merit badge. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Thanks for being with us. Roko? Council Roy? Here. Council Sullivan? Here. Council St. Clair? Here. Council Blaze? Here. Council Benedict? Here. Chairman Alquist? Here. Uh, general public comments. This is a time where we ask anybody from the public if you have anything that's on your mind, and we'll give you three minutes. Just step right up to the microphone and state your name and your address, and let it rip. Tell us what's on your mind, if you'd like. We'll have uh, public comments on each of the issues throughout the night also. So, uh, But if there's anything general you'd like to speak on, just step right up. Yep, sure, go ahead. State your name and address, please. Hi, uh, Harry White, uh, Running Hill Road. I came to talk about the uh, budgets, the school budget and the town budget. And uh, I wish the town, I wish the school board was here, and I wish the superintendent was here, but they're not. The superintendent is at Antwistle. That's right. Uh, they presented a huge increase for this year, somewhere between 10 and 16 percent. Last year they presented a huge increase and drew a line in the sand. And I think they ended up getting something like 6%, didn't they? And I would ask, are the children this year 6% smarter? Are the children this year 1% smarter? I think they're the same. For the coming year they want 10 to 16%. Will the children be 16% smarter? No, they won't. They will not even be 1% smarter because you cannot equate the amount of money spent in a school system with the turn or with the outcome of the children. If you want to change the, how the outcome is and improve the children, you have to improve the teaching staff and the staff that support the teachers. And none of that is being done that I'm aware of. The school board does not seem to understand its mission, which is to represent the schools but not be a cheerleader for them. They also have to represent the taxpayers of this town, and they're not doing that. We are in very tough economic times. I'm on Social Security. In the first two years of the Obama administration, I got zero increases per year. In the third year, I got a small increase, and it was totally taken by Medicare. In the fourth year, I got a small increase, and it was 50% taken by Medicare. So this year, I got like a $25 a month increase. And this town council sits here and gives us huge increases every year. And I simply can't afford it and my neighbors can't afford it. Um, uh, Superintendent Entwistle, I do not understand what he's trying to do. This, last year he drove a line in the sand. This year he drove a, he drove a uh, stake in the ground. Well, he drove a stake in my wallet is what he drove. and. He seems to be into empire building. You know, get the taxpayer to spend a whole lot of money and give him a bigger empire. I would suggest that he audition for a Star Wars sequel movie. Star Wars, I understand, is big in empires. We cannot afford an empire. Moving on to the town. Much praise has been heaped on the town manager for bringing in his, man, his uh, budget something like 2% or a little bit less. I suggest that it should be zero. I suggest the school board, the school budget should be zero increases. That's what we can afford. It should actually be less than that. The town is spending money we don't have. I notice that the Public Works Department has decreased or they, their budget this year by some tiny amount. But at the same time, they're asking for two plow trucks. Those two plow trucks cost over a third of a million dollars, $175,000 each. And even worse, they want a pickup truck for $38,500. Would you wrap it up, Mr. White, please? Pardon? Would you wrap it up, please? Sure. Three minutes, right? 
I bought a pickup truck several years ago. It was $32,000. A, a pickup truck, they should be buying the lowest trim line pickup truck they can afford. That's way too much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak? If not, I just want to mention uh, Councilor Holbrook uh, had another uh, commitment tonight and could not be here. Uh, next is the minutes. Move approval. Second. Comments on the minutes? Any corrections? Sarah's? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. That, that was for both sets? That, yeah. Uh, adjustments to the agenda? We have none. Items to be signed, well, I'll do it throughout the meeting. Uh, first order. Order number 1327 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 313, the Town of Scarborough Property Tax Assessment Ordinance, Section 5, Determination of Eligibility and Amount of Eligibility, and Section 8, Timing of Payments. Tom, would you give yes, us uh, a brief? Briefly, this matter came through the Rules and Policies Committee, and it essentially is a clarification um, as regards to the property tax assistance program and really removes any uh, potential for amounts to be prorated for eligible um, taxpayers who, who apply and, and are eligible. And so the maximum refund would be $500, and it, it certainly could be less than that. It's, uh, it's pinned directly to the state circuit maker program and, and uh, taxpayers' eligibility. But again, this will clarify that um, folks, uh, so long as they're eligible, will receive their full amount. Thank you. And this is a public hearing, so I'll open the public hearing. Is there anybody who would like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. And what's the uh, second reading? What's the wishes of the council? Move the room. Move it. Second. Second. Uh, discussion, comments? Councilor Roy. Yeah, I, um, I think uh, we're all aware that there were some residents that did qualify for the program, but because the amount of monies that we had set aside in that budget were insufficient to meet, meet them fully, and it meant a small amount, certainly, as you look at dollars, but a large amount to those folks. It might have been $30 or 35 or $45, but that meant a lot to them. And so uh, removing the, uh, those two caveats from the, uh, from the uh, policy will allow us to uh, uh, pay them the maximum amount that they're eligible to receive, which I think is good. And I think we've also... Uh, uh, we'll need to adjust the amount of money in this year's budget so that we do have enough. I agree. This is a mayor correction and clarification, I guess. Any other comments? If not, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Next item. Order number 13-28 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 302, the Scarborough Town Council Rules, Policies, and Procedures Manual, Section 101.0, Definitions, by adding a new definition for immediate family. Right. Um, go ahead, Jim. Um, policy Committee did a lot of research, and actually Tom did the most. Uh, to come up with something that's, that's fair and reasonable because if looking around there's three or four or five different meanings of what's immediate family and, and what we all agreed to or came up with was immediate family to mean brothers, sisters, mother-in-law, father-in-law, grandfather, grandmother, grandchild, stepfather, stepmother, stepchildren, or other relative living in the same household as the employee, and that would take into effect uh, domestic partners. And we felt that that was a fair and reasonable thing to do, and it's before the committee now, council, to vote on for exception, to be accepted. Thank you, and that was in form of a motion? Yes. S second? Second. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh, yeah. Excuse me. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on this matter? If you do, step right up. <coughs> Seeing none, motion and a second. Uh, co any other comments from the council? I'm just that uh, this, this uh, definition is in line with our HR department's uh, mm -hmm. definition of uh, immediate family. So it's consistent. Again, this is a clarification. Mm -hmm. 
All those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Next item. Order number 13-32 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the new request for a liquor license from Susan Bailey doing business as Bailey's Lobster Pound, located at 9 Avenue 6. And this is a new license by Susan Bailey, and this is a public hearing, so I'll open up the public hearing. Is there anybody who'd like to speak on this matter? <coughs> yep, step right up. Your name and address, please. My name is Susan Bailey Clow. I live at 5 Avenue 6 in Pine Point. And we're here, we, um, we've we always, well, in recent years, we've sold wine at the Lobster Pound. And we'd like now, we've turned our bait cooler with the blessing of the code enforcement and fire department. We've turned it into a um, service bar so the people eating on our dock can get a glass of beer and wine. And so we'd like to change our off-premise license to an on-premise license in order to be able to do that. We think it's in keeping with the neighborhood um, because the co-op is also serving alcohol on their deck and, uh, of course, the clam bake and Ken's Place and people like that. Um, we haven't ever really had any problems at all with police or anything in our area. And uh, my husband and I live right next door to the Lobster Pound, and so we're definitely part of the community. There's not too much worry of things getting out of control in our area. So. And I believe our neighbors are in support as well. I think you have some letters from them also. So if you have any questions, that's what I'm here for. Thank you. Uh, we, we do have four letters of support oh, for okay. the record, and we'll enter those into the record. Okay. So. Yep. Right. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public who'd like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Um, we need a motion? Yes. Yeah. Do we have a motion? I will move approval move. of this order. Second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Thank you. Resolution 1302 is a resolution to establish an ad hoc historic preservation committee. And this is uh, Council Holbrook's uh, idea, uh, but unfortunately she couldn't be here tonight. Uh, Council Roy, do you have that resolution I in do. front of you? Would you read it, please? Sure. <clears throat> resolution 1302, and this is in the form of a motion to establish an ad hoc historic preservation advisory committee. Be it resolved by the Town Council and the Town of Scarborough, Maine, in the co Town Council assembled, that whereas the Town Council does hereby recognize the importance of historic preservation within the Town of Scarborough, and whereas the Town Council feels it is imperative to develop an ad hoc historic pre preservation advisory committee, and whereas it, it is important to preserve the historic quality of Scarborough for future generations to learn about and enjoy, now, therefore, be it hereby resolved by the Town Council of the Town of Scarborough and Town Council Assemble that the purpose of establishing an ad hoc historic, ad hoc historic preservation advisory committee is, is to preserve the town's historic footprint. Now, therefore, be it further resolved by the Town Council of the Town of Scarborough, Maine and Town Council Assemble that the charge for the ad hoc historic preservation committee shall be as follows. One, purpose. The purpose of the committee is to serve as an ad hoc committee to the town council regarding the historical preservation within the town of Scarborough and to craft a town-wide plan for, for preserving the historic pieces and places that can be used as, as, um, used as a guide for future reference. Two, duties. The committee shall have the following duties. Review and consider historic planning efforts, prepare a town-wide plan, develop recommendations for the town council, Consider funding sources such as grants and or private funding to leverage local funds and provide a report to the council one year from the date of the first meeting. Membership. The committee should be comprised of five members and two alternates as follows. One town councilor, one planning board member, one member of the Star Scarborough Historic Society, and four members of the community. All appointments will be made by the town council. Variances and removal, any vari uh, vac uh, vacancies, I'm sorry, any vacancies shall be filled by the town council. The town council may remove any member of the committee by a vote of majority of its members for misconduct or non-performance of duty. Procedures, four members of the committee shall constitute, co constitute a uh, quorum, excuse me. The committee shall select one of its members to serve as chair and another member who shall serve as recording clerk and keep the minutes of all proceedings and submit these to the town clerk office for filing. The committee shall set its own meeting schedule, which will be open to the public. Signed and sealed this 17th day of April 2013 on behalf of the Scarborough Town Council and the town manager of Scarborough, Maine, 
Signed by uh, Ron Alquist, Chair, and attested by uh, Tody Justice. Wait a second on that. Uh, Councilor Sullivan? <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to make an amendment to the motion. Yep. And it would read adding the names of uh, Don Libby, Rodney Lawton, which will be the Historical Society's uh, member, uh, Susan August, and Sarah Wiley, along with uh, Jessica pa um, Holbrook as the uh, council liaison. Do we have a second to that? Motion? Second. We'll vote on the uh, amendment. amendment first. All those in favor of the amendment? Now the main motion, any comments, uh, Councilor comments on the main motion? Not this is our project of Councilor Holbrook's, um, and she's been wanting to do this for a while, and she sincerely apologized for not being here tonight, but uh, couldn't be, so I think it's a good idea, and we all should support this, so. No other comments? All those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Under new business, uh, order number 1333 is act on the request of the council chair to appoint Councilor Blaze as the council liaison <coughs> member of the employee incentive program. This was uh, Councilor Blaze's idea, so I'll turn it over to him to explain it a little bit, what it is. And <laughs> if you have some uh, people you want to appoint to that committee, let us know. We can do that tonight. If you'd like, Councilor um, Blaze. This is the employee incentive program uh, that the council passed uh, about a month and a half ago. Um, it's a program whereby employees can come forward to a committee, uh, present ideas to uh, save money, uh, improve efficiency, um, and in return, if, uh, if the idea is accepted, by the committee, uh, they would get a uh, uh, some sort of a monetary reward based upon the amount of savings. Um, the I guess there's only two people remaining to be selected to the committee. I guess the committee is all complete, other than myself and one member from the community, and I've. I've identified that person, except he hasn't gotten back to me today, so unfortunately you we can't. Him tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm willing to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this Tom's idea. But uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. And that was in a form of a motion, right? Right. Do we have a second? Second. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Second. Yeah, thank you. Please. Uh, any comments? Again, I think it's a worthwhile idea. It's worth pursuing, and I thank Council Blade for bringing it to our attention, and good luck. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Uh, number, order number 1334 uh, is act, on, act to set the date, time, and location of the school budget validation referendum for Tuesday, May 14, 2013. Absentee ballots will be available on Wednesday, April 24, 2013. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Sorry. Just for I clarification, the order number yeah. are, uh, are different that you're giving, so? Yes, I, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're Apologies. That's okay. fine. Okay. But, but it's just still the same item. 1535. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll move that one to the bottom, Judith. Okay. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on this order? Seeing none, what's the pleasure of the council? Move order uh, 1334. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Uh, order number 1335 is to uh, approve the resolve to accept a donation for the fuel assistance program. Councilor Sullivan. Yes, just a minute. I'm trying to hold on. How's that working for you there, that iPad? It's... <laughs> I'm just um, checking. I, we do have classes that are ongoing. Yes, you don't e you're not even paying attention to what's going on. <laughs> Again. Yes. I got it. I'm all set now, thanks. <clears throat> okay. 
Be it hereby resolved by the Town of Scarborough Town Council as follows, that the Town of Scarborough gratefully accepts the pledges and donations from the following businesses and or persons that have been collected to date to be used for the Fuel Assistance Program. Cat Mac Group, Scarborough by Local, Amy Shin, Erica Pinkham, Scarborough High School Cheer Cheering Club, and Wing Lee Restaurant and be it further resolved that each business, organization, and or person be recognized for their generous donations as a token of the town's appreciation. Thank you very much. In that form of a motion? Yes. Second. Thank you. Again, thank you, uh, everybody, for your donations. This is certainly uh, something that this council uh, feels very strongly about, and uh, just because it's warmer weather mm -hmm. doesn't uh, mean we should slow down any. So please. Um, Donate as you can and for this worthy program. Thank you. Any other comments? If not, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Next and item. My, my apologies. I uh, inadvertently left one out. Order number 13, which will be 1336, is move approval on the request to establish a new property tax assistance reserve account pursuant to the provisions of Title 30A, Sections 5801 and 5802 of the Maine Revised Statutes as amended and supplemented to date. Uh, Tom, you want to explain? Sure. This uh, resolve uh, order, excuse me, relates back to order number 1327. You just took out. It pertains to the property tax assistance um, program we have in place, and this result, this order creates a special reserve account that, in the event um, monies go unspent in a given budget year, rather than falling back to the general fund, uh, they'll go to a dedicated reserve account and therefore be available in the future should we come. Um, find ourselves short some year. And so um, I believe this came from the same conversation at the Music Policies Committee and also Finance Committee. And uh, staff is certainly prepared to put this in place. Thank you. Anybody from the public would like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, what's the pleasure of the council? Oh. Second. The question. Second. Uh, any questions? Comments? If not, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. On action items, we have none. Standing in special committee reports. Uh, Council Wright. Um, <clears throat> I don't have too many. Um, the Finance Committee met um, Tuesday. Uh, we've uh, developed some recommendations, and we're waiting for the manager to uh, give us the refinement of that. Um, and certainly, I've, touched, I've, I've touched, reached out to each councillor individually to see if there were any additional uh, adjustments to the budget that we'd like to make. Um, I would like to ask that the Finance Committee meet uh, next Tuesday, just briefly, so that we can review the, the, um, review the recommendations again, because we did make some adjustments. And so we know that that's what we want to be recommending to the council when uh, it comes to the final vote on May 1st. Um, Scarborough Chamber met this week. I did not attend. Um, Energy Committee is, uh, has moved its meeting from tomorrow to the 23rd, and um, we're going to be doing looking at some video productions. Uh, each each member has been charged with making a video of some maybe low hanging fruit or some energy energy saving project that they've done in their home, uh, which then we hope to be able to use as small clips on the website for the Energy Committee. Um, and Long Range Planning Committee also was supposed to meet Friday and then uh, they changed their meeting date to uh, May 3rd. Uh, we also have another meeting on May 8th um, uh, with some results from the Sustained Southern Maine workshop that we attended last week. And I think that's it for committees that I can recall right now. Thank you. Uh, Council Sullivan. Uh, we haven't, uh, the um, tra uh, Transportation Committee meets uh, tomorrow, so I have nothing to report on that, and ordinance is on the 30th, so I have nothing to report on that. Okay. Thank you. Council St. Clair. <clears throat> I attended the school board meeting just about two weeks ago, closely watching what's happening with them not much to report. I know they are working hard on refining their budget. Uh, the library meets tomorrow night. 
Um, I have not attended one of those yet. I'm hoping to be there tomorrow. And that's it for me. Council Blaze. Uh, the Senior Advisory Committee uh, met uh, last week. They have uh, over 100 new members since the January mailing requesting additional members. So the membership is up above 350. Um, they're spending, uh, based upon their budget so far this year, is in good shape. Um, they continue to look for additional new members, and they're working to get additional local discounts uh, for the 55-plus members. And that's it. Thank you, Councilman Benedict. Uh, yes, we've got the <coughs> Shellfish Commission that had a meeting. Uh, these people take amazing care and put in amazing time down at the waterfront and not just at the pier, uh, the various beaches, etc. cetera. And um, they've got something going on with the mud flats and clamming that they had to get to the bottom of. And unfortunately, some of the language is not part of what I speak. Um, <laughs> so there's a little bit of understanding misunderstanding as to where they're going, what they're doing. But basically they were bringing up about boats being registered, people having stickers, keeping a close eye, having cameras down there. It is going to encompass the entire parking area as well as the boating area, and they're paying for it themselves, which they pay a lot of things for. Um, they had cautions for red tide and for people to make sure when they hear of red tide to put the word around because when it comes, it comes fast. Um, they basically uh, don't have any more meetings. They might have one more, but they sort of go into hiding for the summer because they're very busy with fishing trying to figure out something to do with lobsters and pricing, as I'm sure you've all followed in the newspaper. Um, they're trying to come to some agreement that's between us and Canada and the whole lobster business in, in general. Uh, the other committee is the... I want to get the right words. Council of Rules and Policy Committee. We had a meeting tonight, and we basically only had one one agenda item that we did not finish. And that was a policy regarding roadside memorials. Um, that we will be getting some input from uh, Police Chief Moulton, as as he would be our biggest input uh, between him and. Town manager Tom, Tom Hall. Yeah, we want to just have something in general, nothing that is as harsh at all, because we certainly want to be sympathetic and empathetic with the neighborhood of Scarborough. Um, we also discussed ad hoc committees and advisory committees with time lengths. Um, that people are under the impression sometimes that when they were put onto a committee that they're a committee for life member, and that's not always necessary or pertinent. Some ad hoc, ad hoc, ad hoc committees, uh, their tenure is based on when their purpose is fulfilled. Uh, but we're going to just tweak these a little better so this not so much of a misunderstanding when people are uh, put on to committees because committees, some committees come and go <clears throat> and they're only in line for a certain period of time which is what we need and that's about it sir. Thank you. Uh, the uh, Eco Maine Board of Directors met and again uh, lowered the tipping fee for communities which uh, will have a Put a, give Council Roy and the rest of us a happy feeling, you know, have a little extra money 
uh, from Eco Maine. There was another a number of other committees and functions we all attended, but I guess we can talk about those a little bit in our closing comments. Uh, the town manager's report. Yes, first item. Um, you might have noticed the uh, pond dredging uh, here at Memorial Park is underway. It started earlier this week. Will likely continue into early next week. This uh, they drained the pond, uh, dredging out some of the materials that have silted in over time and will cause some of the problems with algae uh, and uh, functioning of the, the pump system. So things are going reasonably well. Um, the material. Be a great surprise. Uh, it is fairly wet, and so the dewatering um, containment area um, has to be built a bit larger, and the material has to stay a bit longer before it's transported ultimately up to the town owned um, landfill site on Holmes Road. Uh, just an update on the assessor recruitment. Councilor, Council Chair Alquist participated in the first round interviews last week. I'm pleased to report that we do have a a lead candidate we're continuing to speak with, and in fact, we've arranged for an opportunity for uh, Councilor Alquist and Councilor Roy to meet uh, with that person next week, and we hope to have a recommendation before the Council at your May 15th meeting, which, uh, which would be ideal. Um, also, in concert with Councilor Alquist, we're looking to schedule a dedication or ribbon cutting ceremony for the new beach house, uh, bathhouse at Higgins Beach. Um, although the facility is up and running, it's really not being used much at all at this juncture, but we thought it would be appropriate certainly to take time and just uh, celebrate the accomplishment and do it before the official kickoff of summer on Memorial Day. So more material will be coming around, but that's a Friday, May 24th, and we're thinking late morning uh, around 11 a.m. Um, also in terms of housekeeping, I've mentioned in the past, but I'll, I'd like to mention it again. We're scheduling a, a May 8th workshop. Um, we'd like to expand that slightly and include the first half hour uh, would be a staff presentation um, uh, based on the recommendations from the Transportation Committee. There are three substantial projects that uh, are in the budget this year, and we haven't had the opportunity yet to present kind of the details of that. We'd like to do it. Uh, so our, my suggestion is that we meet at uh, 5.30 or so. We can serve a very light dinner. We'll have a, some pizzas and drinks here. Uh, move through that portion of the agenda and then focus the rest of the time on uh, this economic development business friendly approach, which was a goal of council this year. We've got some, I think, interesting things to update you on. <coughs> and just lastly, uh, as Council Roy mentioned earlier, the Finance Committee, I thought, had concluded their work, but it appear apparently we're meeting Tuesday and I'll have to find out particulars to make sure staff can be there. I'm sure we can. But for the rest of us, um, Going forward, the critical dates for related to budget, uh, Monday the 22nd of April, the school board will consider their budget and final reading. And then two days later on April 24th, there's a joint workshop with the school board focused on the budget. And all of that leads to, um, I guess two weeks from tonight, May 1st, uh, the budget's back before the council in second and final reading and, and, and adoption. Um, so there's certainly some work left to do and uh, opportunities for the public to be involved and to make their voices heard. Thank you. Thank can you. I, can I ask a question? Just I don't have the date down of the meeting with the potential candidate. I, did, I don't, didn't put it in my phone. I, I believe it's uh, either Monday or Tuesday night. I, I'll I check was, in my office. I'm thinking it was Monday, but I, I think you're think, right. I don't think you but I didn't put it in, so. I'll see you before you leave. Okay. Yeah. Councilor Roy, Councilor Comments? Oh, I just went away. Um, certainly, I, I always start by offering out condolences, and there were a number of folks who passed away since our last meeting. Uh, one is a longtime resident of Scarborough, Barbara Sawyer, um, Stephen King, and there were three, re uh, three residents at the Veterans Home, Susan Wellesley, Bruno Nolet, and David Hewitt. And a resident at Casa, Michael Flahive, um, he's been a resident of Casa for a number of years. And we had a 2005 graduate of Scarborough High School, Stephen Foster, who passed away. And then Barbara Cole, the mother of John Cole, who was on our school board. He lost his dad in November and then um, just lost his mother um, this past week. So our condolences go out to all of them. Um, 
I guess just a reminder, the Public Safety Awards night is April 20th at 5 at the High School Auditorium, if any counselors are interested in attending that. Um, and the budget process, um, Tom kind of gave you a synopsis of where we are. Um, basically, I think we've we've kind of finished our finished our work, but we wanted to look at the potential changes. You said you would rework those mm -hmm. numbers, and I think we just really wanted to look at them and make sure that we were accurate with with what we were proposing and that we've got uh, um, a majority support of that. Um, there are a number of uh, adjustments. Um, and many to the to the favor, uh, i.e., uh, increased numbers of dollars that that uh, um, can be removed from the budget. A couple hundred thousand, I think, at least, on the municipal side. But I, I don't don't quote me on that. Um, my head's been fuzzy, and I, I think it's just all these numbers are up there jumping around in in my head. Um, Certainly, I hope that as far as the budget process in the school department, uh, they've, they've received a clear message from, from the finance committee, at least, at our meeting a week ago Thursday, um, of our expectations, and hopefully they took that seriously, and the budget that they uh, vote upon on uh, Monday night uh, is reflective of uh, every effort they can give to reduce that uh, amount uh, of dollars that uh, increase that uh, our residents um, would be subjected to. So hopefully everybody does their, does their work and, and gets what they need and, and uh, leaves the wants on the sidewalk. Thank you. Council Roy, uh, April 29th is that uh, evening meeting. That it we, is. It's yep. the 29th. Okay. 29th. We need Maybe to have I have that in my have calendar. Okay. Councilor you. Sullivan. I have nothing. Councilor St. Clair. I don't have anything tonight, thank you. Council Blades. Nothing. Jim, you must have something. Of course I do. <laughs> Council Benedict. Uh, two things, one not related to the other. Uh, I'd like for us to bow ahead in a moment of silence in remembrance of the people and the horrific act that took place in Boston yesterday and that it make us ever mindful of our surroundings and to pay attention to what's going on uh, and to take a moment of silence for the people involved. Thank you. Second thing, almost as important, Drug Take Back Day is this Saturday the 27th from 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock at the police station. The way this works is real simple. Take your old medicines that are in pill form, not liquid and not syringes, but in pill form and bring them to the police station. There's no questions asked or whatever and they get disposed of appropriately. Um, you will find programs in Tony's office, there's a large poster, and I got this one last night, and it'll be around town, so if you have whatever medicines you have, you can bring them in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and for me, this morning I attended, uh, and uh, Tom and Tony, we attended a uh, swearing-in uh, promotions for I, th I think we hired two new paramedics, firefighters, and there was a couple of promotions. Uh, Timmy Barker was uh, promoted to sergeant in the police department, and Tim has been around for many years. And he grew up in Scarborough and grew up with us, and it's uh, terrific to see him promoted. Uh, his dad, as we all remember, was a uh, sergeant for a very long time and served almost, I don't know, 40 years, I guess, um, with the Scarborough uh, Police Department. So it, it's kind of nice to see the family thing. Family and friends were here today. And um, so it, it, was a, it was a nice ceremony um, to recognize the newly hired people and the promotions of polo, uh, both police and fire. And it's kind of nice they do it together, and it shows that we can do those things together and how close they are as um, two agencies and how close they work together. So it was a it was a really nice experience.
Um, again, I want to thank the Boy Scouts for being here tonight and lead, leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, that's terrific, and I hope you get your badge. And uh, if you any problems there, just give us a call. You know, we'll try to help you. <laughs> but uh, other than that, um, I want to thank the folks on the Budget Committee for work that they have done so far. It's, uh, it's, it's always difficult being on the Budget Committee. We've been on there. I've been on there many times, but it's never easy down to the end. I think everybody's struggling to save a little bit and uh, other people are trying to expand things and uh, it's a it's a really um, tight rope we walk. And so when we come back to the second reading of the budget, which I think is May 1st, Councilor Roy said May 1st, then the council should be prepared. We're going to vote on the budget that night and if you have any amendments, that would be the time to do it. Uh, Again, there's going to be a joint workshop that's going to come right up. Well, Council Roy, when is that again? The 24th. The 24th between the school department and the town council, if anybody, if, if you folks can attend. So that probably will be helpful. So, again, thank, thanks to the uh, people on the finance committee. I know it's difficult, but uh, we appreciate the work you do. And with that, I have nothing else. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you.